if they want to try and see what I've got hidden in my bikini, they're welcome to. So Deborah, where are you tonight? And word late tonight that two suspects are in FBI custody after a truckload of explosives was discovered around the George Washington Bridge. That bridge uh, links uh, New York to New Jersey over the Hudson River. Whether the discovery of those explosives had anything to do with other events of the day is unclear, but the FBI has two suspects in hand, said the truck uh, load of explosives, and enough explosives were in the truck to do great damage to the George Washington Bridge but they arrested the two suspects and they're questioning them as we speak. And all of a sudden, down there, I see this van park, and I see three guys on top of the van, and I could see that they were, like, happy. You know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me. You know, they didn't look shocked. I thought it was very strange. We had received an all points bulletin and uh, I just happened to see the van and, you know, hollered over to my lieutenant, you know, I think that could be the van. We checked it out and it was. 
you know, we were all on edge, obviously, so I really wasn't looking to make friends with these people, and neither were the officers that I were with. Once we started talking to them, you know, they were pretty much like, hey, you know, we're, you know, we're not against you, we're with you. And at that point, we were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is, we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. Our purpose was to document the event. I was watching the towers, and though I wasn't the closest, I saw them crumble to the earth like they were full of explosives. And they thought nobody noticed the news report that they did about the bombs planted on the George Washington Bridge. Four non-Arabs arrested during the emergency, and then it disappeared from the news permanently. They dubbed the tape of Osama, and they said it was proof. Jealous of our freedom, I can't believe you bought that excuse. Rocking a motherfucking flag don't make you a hero. We're at the ground zero, the devil crept into heaven, God overslept on the 7th, the new world order was born on September 11th. Father forgive them for they don't know right from wrong, the truth is set you free, written down in the song, and the song has the cause of death written in cold, the word of God brought to light that has saved your soul, save your soul motherfucker, save your soul. And just so conservatives don't take it to heart, I don't think Bush did it, cause he isn't that smart. It has been more than 16 years since a civilian working for the Navy was charged with passing secrets to Israel. Jonathan Pollard pled guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage and is serving a life sentence. At first, Israeli leaders claimed Pollard was part of a rogue operation, but later took responsibility for his work. Now Fox News has learned some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S., who may have known things they didn't tell us before September 11th. Fox News correspondent Carl Cameron has details in the first of a four-part series. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. There is no indication that the Israelis were involved in the 9-11 attacks, but investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins, but when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 9-11 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Well, I won't argue that civilization meant something different in the past, but uh, if we we're to live in the 21st century, I say we define it correctly. To me, civilized means uh, not indulging in acts that would be counter to the values that reflect are reflected by the majority of people. The American people themselves are not necessarily barbaric, but the policies of America are, in fact, barbaric. They're uh, war crimes. They're crimes against humanity. What I see in America, really, uh, coming from the American perspective, is manipulation after manipulation, indoctrination feeding into that in a propaganda machine that gets the result that's intended. America has lived off of war, and Eisenhower famously said, beware of the military-industrial complex. We can go back to the sinking of the Lusitania, which was a very predictable uh, occurrence when we sent that ship into the waters that were known to have German U-boats. After it sunk, the American people went into a war that they really wanted no part of. Shortly after that, we had World War II, the American people again wanted no part of it and yet Franklin Delano Roosevelt was fully aware of the coming attack by the Japanese fleet and made sure that they would incur maximum casualties on that day once again the American people yes, manipulated but even into without war. without Pearl Harbor America would have been dragged into that war because Hitler declared war on America rather than it being the other way around. It's inevitable that America would go into World War II. But are you saying that... Are you what saying I'm saying is that the American president knew about a fleet coming to kill American soldiers, sons and daughters, and that he allowed that to happen, and in fact made sure that American sons and daughters were murdered needlessly. Okay. Well, we, we are in a perpetual state of war now, aren't we? Uh, whether we go back to the overthrow of Mossadegh in Iran, uh, CIA coups in Central and South America, 
We can go back to the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which is acknowledged to be an absolute lie at this point. How about the USS Liberty, in which Israel, America's ally, attacked a U.S. Navy ship for hours and killed 34 U.S. sailors? The Sixth Fleet was then called back. Defenses of that ship were called back by McNamara and Lyndon Johnson. These are all established facts covered up. That was intended to bring us into the Six-Day War and attack Egypt and have the first uh, invasion and occupation of those lands in that time. We have since then had other occurrences, such as 9-11, which is the be-all, end-all of manipulation, to buy into the notion that Osama bin Laden and 19 hijackers are responsible for this event is the height of lunacy. It is the most ridiculous conspiracy of all, and it is the excuse for this so-called war on terror, which is, in fact, a so war of terror, committing state-sponsored terrorism to the tune of one million dead Iraqis and counting, millions of orphans and millions of refugees, who never mind Afghanistan, America? and uh, now who, attacking who, who Pakistan as well. So, well. Who is responsible? Absolutely inside job. The U.S. government and intelligence agencies, including Mossad, including the Mossad agents who were in Liberty Park, who were told to go and capture the event on cameras and admitted to it, in Tel Aviv on Israeli television, they obviously had foreknowledge of the so event. The Israelis are the ones who. The Israelis and the, the Americans, they could not have done it without the government and the inside oh. job that well, was required. Obviously. Can you uh, give us an insight into the disparities? Well, yes. When it comes to the people, those that are the backbone of America across the spectrum, then America is not a nanny state, and that's what uh, the politicians say. When it comes to the bankers, a trillion dollars is brought to bear for the bankers to save them. When it comes to war and the war-making industries, plenty of money can be extracted from the American taxpayer to fund war. But when it comes to taking care of its own people, there is destitution, poverty, hunger, tremendous injustice. Home of the Free has, I believe, the largest prison population in the world, if not certainly one of the biggest prison populations in the world. The working class people are being used up, exploited, sent off to wars, and yet the American government continues to claim that it can't take that care American of things electric? back home. It's all part of a game, again, that uses us working class people as pawns. Do you and think it would be wise to, put, to face up to it and realize it. Mm -hmm. Do you think the American electorate would support uh, higher taxes that are needed to correct this distribution? No, we don't need to raise taxes. We need to stop fighting wars halfway around the world based on lies and investing insane amounts of money in policies that equate to mass murder. If we do that, all that money would now be freed up for the American people. We don't need to give the bankers a trillion dollars. Those are the same people that are running our economies into the well, ground, me bring living high Robert on the hogs. So we don't need to raise taxes. We could lower taxes mm -hmm. and take care Let of people. Let me bring Robert in. America in decline anytime soon? Absolutely. I believe in catalyzing events, having the ability to really raise people's consciousness and allow them to think again. Let us not underestimate, I will say, that the American people are largely being hoodwinked, and I would even go so far as to say that anyone who believes in the official version of 9-11 has been more than hoodwinked, and I repeat my willingness to debate anyone at this table and beyond on that very subject. I say that the American people have it within their capacity to actually affect change and be the ideal that they wish they were. That is possible. But if you have no faith um, in the democratic system as it is, are we talking about another American revolution? You know, what, what are you talking about with people power? The first thing I would start with is take control of your media because the media is passing on information that allows people to be hoodwinked into buying into wars that are based on lies. If that propaganda machine did not exist, you would not be so stupid as to be led into a war that is going to well, equate to war crimes. Well, the media is crimes. used in all countries to promote right. wars. But since America has the most profound impact on the world, and we're talking about America tonight, more than any other nation, they need to take control of their propaganda machine, which is hoodwinking the people. Also, look at the system of indoctrination. Question what you've been told. I, like every other American, grew up believing that my nation was the greatest in the world, that it was the beacon of freedom and democracy. Any critical look at the history of America, especially over the last hundred years, makes it clear that not only is America antagonistic and destroying popular democracy around the world, but without question is the number one terrorist by any reasonable definition well, of the I'm word.